Hey, Islam, you guys. Welcome to Malik Pai. So we talked about Prophet Luth, Islam, the problem that Prophet Luth was going through and uh, the disgusting things that they were doing, homosexuality. And uh, now the angels were sent down to Prophet Luth and they are about to destroy nations. So we'll find out what happens next. <laughs> Prophet Luth al-Islam, this is his, uh, uh, you know, prof uh, all the angels, these three angels are here at Prophet Ibrahim al-Islam's house. They're not eating because angels don't need food. They don't eat. Okay, they're like, we don't need, we don't have any need for this food. Now Prophet Ibrahim is understanding what's happening. They're about to uh, kill uh, Prophet, uh, Prophet Luth. Yes, yeah, so. And his people. Yeah, Prophet Luth's people. Very good, right? So they're going to bring a punishment. So, um. Who was in the house of Prophet uh, mm -hmm. Ibrahim al Islam? Uh, his, his wife, like. It, What's her name? I mean, Hajar. Uh, no, no, Hajar no, no, is no, in. Hawa, Mac Hawa. Hawa is, Hawa is Hawa. Adam al Islam's wife. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, who is his other wife? Well, that's what I'm asking you. Sara? Yes. Sara, yes. So Sara is in the back. Yes. What? Where have you been, <laughs> man? Sara. <laughs> He had a wife, Sarah, who was a very beautiful lady that when, when well, he went I to, the, remember the king, king when yeah, he had the conversation, no, 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 then he they, gifted them Hajar. I thought they divorced. No, he, he just moved that family to Mecca. Okay, so you have Hajar and Ismail living in Mecca and Sarah is living with him in another town. Okay, oh, okay. now Sarah doesn't, have, does, does she have a baby? Uh, no. Nope. Not yet. She's okay, dead. right, because she's old. So she's in the background and she laughed when she heard that angels are here to destroy. What? Why would she laugh? She was happy for what's going to happen to the evildoers. So we should not, by the way, we shouldn't hate the evildoers because you, ha you should have this hope that they will be guided. But now, all, all hope, that's why the angels are here, right? Allah has already made the decision that he's not going to be guiding them. So now you should be happy that the evil is going to be g getting rid of from this land, right? So she laughs in the background and she was happy that the evil pe people were going to get their, uh, you know, what they deserve, right? Yeah. So angels, then they said, they gave her the good news of who? That she's going to have a baby. She's going to have a baby. So then she slapped her face and she's like, I'm a barren woman. Barren woman is basically a woman when she gets so old that she can't have uh, her, she can't get pregnant anymore, right? Even before then, she couldn't have it. And yeah, and she's like, okay, I didn't have this baby all this time. And look at my, my husband, he's so old. And, and, and you, you think I'm going to have a baby? And then, uh, and this is again, this is after Ismail al Islam was born, right? Uh, and then not just that, they're told that after Prophet Ishaq, who's next? Ismail. No. It's not, he was already. It's Haq and Isa. He got uh, murdered. It's Haq and Isa. No, man. Who's Prophet Ishaq's son? Who's Prophet Ishaq's son? Uh, Yaqub. Yaqub. Okay, and Yaqub's son is Yusuf. Okay, so you guys got to know this. This uh, I know we're supposed to be talking about Prophet Luth, but this is important. Prophet Ibrahim al Islam, he's the dad. He had a wife named Hajar, whose steps we follow in Safa Marwa doing Umrah. He's the, she's the one that Prophet uh, Ibrahim left in, uh, Mecca, in Mecca, Mecca. Mecca with his son, Prophet Ismail. So Prophet Ibrahim with his wife, Hajar, had Ismail. Now Prophet Ibrahim is getting news with his wife, Sarah, that he's, she's going to have Ishaq. And then they're also told that after Ishaq, their son, Yaqub, and Yaqub, has a son Yusuf, and we'll get into all that topic they told, later. They told her all of so, that. definitely told them that you're going to have Prophet Ishaq, your son. Okay, so now, uh, again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of everything. Hey, Esani Baba, let's sit down and listen. I'm almost done, okay? All right. So, now, uh, Ibrahim is concerned. Why is he concerned? For Luth. For Luth, yes, because then that will that will destroy his family member, right? So he's also concerned about people. He wanted them to have another chance. Angel said, leave this alone. This is a matter that has already been decreed. There is no turning back. This is it. This is Allah's decision. We're going to do it. 
Now, there will be a punishment that's coming and there's no turning back. Boys, angels came, three beautiful men coming to town of Luth. And who do they like? They like men. Now, these are three beautiful men coming down. So Luth hears about the news and he's like, all right. So he goes, he rushes, like, all right, he, he hears the news that three beautiful men are coming to the town and watch out. So he runs to them and he's like, hey, man, you know, he kept, keeps on telling them. He's like, I don't know if you know about this, but th there's a lot of corrupted people living here. Right. So because uh, he knows that if he, if they if the people hear about the guests, the beautiful guests are here, they would want to, like, do bad things with them. OK, kiss them and things like that. So um, uh, and they will become somebody else's guests. So he tells them, you know, uh, there are a lot of evil people living here. And he, but he doesn't know that they are angels. So he keeps on telling them, right? He keeps on saying, and these people are like, you know, these people are very evil, very evil. Angels keep on walking. And then Luth is, so Luth is like, uh, these people are, he's like, okay, these people are not getting the point. So he's getting uncomfortable for them, right? So he calls them over. He's like, okay, angel, or no, not angels, of course. Hey, you three men, you got to come to my house. Let me invite you over. Right, so he and then he locks the door, okay, and then wife of Luth was there and she finds out. What does she do? She, she, tells everybody else. she leaks the news. She goes out and she's like, "You guys like men, right? There's some three very beautiful looking men in my house. Go get them. If that's what you like, fulfill your desires. Come and and meet these three beautiful men in my house, okay? So now." Uh, so now the, the, the crowd is gathering up around Prophet Lut's house, okay? This is how they're, they're it's like they're intoxicated in their, their love for men, right? They, that's what they want. It's weird and it's uncomfortable. Yes, it is, right? Now, Lut doesn't want to leave them, right? But he's, So now what's it called? Um, uh, people in the city, there's this huge crowd gathering. So now Allah, Allah says, in your life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes um, an oath? You know, what the oath is like promise, right? Like basically when you want to really, like you know how to say, I swear by Allah. Yeah. Us human beings, that's the only thing we can swear by. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can swear by anything because that's his creation. So he says, when he says, by, by, I, I swear by time, which is wal asr, it tells you time is important, Okay. He will swear by, you know, this time, you know what he says? Allah says, I, in your life, right? I swear by, by whose life? Who's he talking? Yeah. Prophet yeah. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's talking to Prophet Muhammad oh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because it's the ayah is being sent down to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mm -hmm. And he's like, by your, and Allah never makes oath on anybody. He will make oath on yeah. time, on himself maybe, or what, you know, when he says, watini was zaytun, different things. He's saying a life in the life of Prophet Muhammad tells you how strong, you know, his words are for this, this matter that's happening. He says they are in their wild intoxication, intoxication, wandering blindly. This is how much that their desire of men has overpowered them, that they're just like, they're just in, intoxicated, meaning they're like, it's like they're drunk. By your life, O Muhammad, they are intoxicated and they're wandering blindly so those desires can make a person drunk but what what should we do who do we like as men well, well, i don't like any of those uh, <laughs> we should marry okay marry okay and then you can kiss your wife all you want <laughs> all right so luke said these are my guests all right so guys luke goes out and he's like, guys, don't disgrace my guest. I have guests over, right? Didn't we prohibit? So then they're like, didn't we prohibit you not to host any guests? They had put laws on them because they know that Luth al Islam will stop, uh, you know, from from them meeting other other men. So he's like, didn't we tell you not to have guests over? By lo by law, they had restrict they had put restrictions on him, right? So he said, look, guys, come on, marry my daughters, not his own daughters, but meant like. There's other women in, in my house, you know, because he was like an older leader in the community. And he's like, marry my daughters, marry the woman of this, this, this town. Don't marry guys. OK. And they said, uh, Luth, you know exactly what, what, what we want. All right. You know, we don't want them. Uh, you know exactly what we want. OK. So Luth says, OK, this is a distressful day. Now he's stressed. So he wasn't from that town, but, uh, but he didn't have anybody to help. Remember, he came from wherever Prophet Ibrahim left. He's there as a prophet. 
So he says, if only I had power, you know, source to lean on. He is so stressed because these people are going to end up dishonoring his, his guests and they're going to end up uh, doing something bad. And that's exactly what he was sent to people so they don't do these things, right? So in that moment, three men who were there, they spoke out. They're like, hey, Luth, we're messengers of Allah. Do not fear. Leave with your family in the darkness of night and don't take your wife, okay? Leave in the darkness of the night. She'll be punished with them. And don't look back. There's an appointed time and that appointed time is in the morning. So turn around, take people, all the family members, all the Muslims with you. In the darkness of the night, leave. That is what you got to do. Do not look back. And by the way, don't take your wife. Okay. So Lut left in the darkness and in the morning, there was an awful cry, a scream that came. Angel Jibreel came down and in his angelic form, not even his human form. He came in his angel form. And he has these wings, 700 wings, they say that he had. And with just, not with like his whole wing, with just the tip of his wing, he takes a town, takes it up in the air, flips it, smacks it down. People are already like, you know, so now on top of that, Allah SWT has sent down a stone from the heavens with the name of each person in that town with the name written on it. Meaning this stone is dedicated for so-and-so bad guy who used to love men, okay? Men in a bad way. I love you boys, but in a bad way, right? Those, those guys were doing, loving other men on a bad way. So, so you, got my, you, got, you know what I'm saying, right? All right, all right. So, okay. So an awful cry comes. The town gets flipped upside down. And on top of that, each, there's a stone that is sent down for each person. They're just destroying. It's like missiles from the heavens coming down. And destroying these people. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And Allah has never ever combined a punishment like that into like one big punishment and destroy people like that. On top of that, he's swearing by the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And now we're living in a society that's publicly promoting this. And you are considered wrong if if you're like, what's wrong with you? Let the, you know, if a guy likes a guy, let them marry each other. They love each other. If a woman likes a woman, let them marry each other. Love is love, right? Like, what kind of person are you if you don't, you know? But now we know if, if a guy marries a guy, let's say, what's going to happen? First of all, it's already bad. Well, well it's, now we could get punished for, for it. Like in the day of judgment, not like a real, like, in, like maybe in real life, but it's not going to be like, you know. Yeah, so. The lot, no, so. If uh, the basically the, the the key over here is is that, um, yeah. If 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 you tell them to stop, they will actually tell you like, what's wrong with you, right? Oh, but yeah, your 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 answer is right. Life wouldn't move on if girls marry girls. Guess what? They cannot. They're not able to have a kid. They have to have a husband. Allah will not give you a baby in in a mom's belly unless you have unless you marry a. Uh, if yeah, if, exactly. Two guys, a guy can never get pregnant, okay? And, you know, we're not made for, for, for that. So if, if everybody does that, life is not going to move on. So sometimes they will say, well, we're, we were born in a wrong body. No, you were not. Allah created you for a purpose, and He knew that your gender as a man is best for you. Don't think that you were trapped in a wrong body. Uh, so accept that you're a guy and do everything that a guy is supposed to do. And nobody, oh no, nobody would be even alive if you did that. Right. So, so now the key is uh, in this from this story we get is that it was a disgusting habit that they did. Their nation was destroyed, and uh, after that, um, you know, Prophet Allah Subhanahu wa Taala saved Prophet Luth and all the, all of his followers. But the key is we're now we're learning so much about all these different prophets and different problems that they had to go through and uh, different problems that they had to deal with their nations and how they dealt with it. They still called out people. They still gave them alternatives that this is what you should do, this is what you shouldn't do. And at the end, if they didn't believe, they did their part and Allah SWT came and brought down the punishment. So now we should learn some lesson from that. And if we see somebody in our society worshiping idols, men marrying men, women marrying um, uh, women, we should tell them that this is wrong rather than saying, yeah, we're with you. We're going to support you with whatever you do as long as you're good people. That is not how we work, okay? So uh, now with that, we're going to end, but I just want to give you uh, 
Uh, a little highlight about the next uh, story of is considered one of the best stories. Prophet Allah Subhanahu is saying this is the best story, and it's the story of Prophet Yusuf Alayhi Salam. We'll be talking about that in our in our next class. Uh, share this message, share the love. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share it if you're on uh, uh, watching this on uh, Facebook. Follow YouTube, subscribe. Just want to make sure that we spread the word, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in our next video. This is Malik Pai. Assalamualaikum.